Well, hi, everybody, and welcome into Clemson's Death Valley, where it's number one versus number 11, Clemson and Texas A&M. a lot, just scramble drill and had some pressure, shot out of the pocket and the receivers did a good job of kind of working their rules and getting open. Now we had like kept calling this play, oh, this is the second time we called it, it just wasn't working and Justin just made a play, got out, ran to the back of the end zone, it was, it was nice. You got a blitz on here, trying to wrap around, tackle got me, great hit by Nolan. Ah, Jamie, why didn't you scoop it up? He tried to. I think he told me he was trying to scoop it up, but uh, juggled it once and was like, no, I, got, I just got to land on it. Thank God he did. That's huge. Big turnover for the defense. Gets everybody in the stadium going crazy. Big momentum shift and gets the offense on the field ready to put points on the board for us. So that was big. That's a huge play in the game. That's a momentum changer. Yep, there comes AJ Scott free. Ooh, great job by XT beating the tackle. Little swim move, dip and rip. Oh, day, day. Just on third and nine, two. Big play, makes it fourth and long. Punt team, get ready. That's what Coach V likes to say. Punt team, punt team's up. I first saw this, I thought they squi like they squished it. Like I thought, I thought they would. I thought, day, they, they really. Got it. I thought his head came off for real, but that was a great play by AJN. Um, XT, because I thought they killed the man, but for real. This was before halftime. We were just trying to get points on the board. 
This was supposed to be a double move, but T just ran straight past the guy, so he just kept going down the seam. That was a crazy catch. His length is incredible. Another safety was right there, so I tried to throw it away from him, and he just made a great play, and C got picked up at the end. As I was in the game, I was like, whoa, like, it was two dudes on him, and he turned back, caught it over both of them. He tried to get in the zone. But that was a great throw, too putting into only where five could get it. I thought he scored, honestly, like when he reached the ball out. He got stopped, but you know, on the sideline, he was like, dang, I made a Renfro catch. And I was like, yeah, you made a Renfro catch, bro. Like he, he was feeling himself because he felt like a Renfro. He catches everything that comes his way. So you gotta love to see it. We got another blitz on here. It's third down. Oh, coming free. Tanner with the pick. He had to land on the one yard line too. Couldn't have just fallen in the end zone and gotten the, to the ball from 20. I knew that back was gonna flare. I was I was man on him the whole time, so I knew I knew what was about to happen. And Tanner came up, made a great play. I was hoping to get the pick, but you know Tanner Tanner ended up being the lucky guy on the on the scene of the crime. That's a big play though, big play in the red zone. Red zone turnovers got no points off of it. That's just demoralizing for the offense. Big momentum changer right there. Love it. Gosh, that's a little simple bubble screen. It was one of those things where I caught the ball. I was trying to get as much as I could. As soon as I caught it, the corner was like right in my face. So, you know, I just, I put my head down. I broke the tackle. I thought I was about to get loose, but he, he came and uh, he tackled my leg. He's a game changer. A lot of people look at him, he's, he's a little shorter, but he plays 6'3". Just hearing the crowd uh, really made me feel good after that, especially just, just knowing how much they support me and stuff like that, so you can just see how much of a recovery he's made, looks strong, just as good as he was before he got hurt. I know he was really excited to come out and play. We were all excited for him, and he, he had been looking for this moment. He wanted to play against Tech, and he thought he could, but we held him out, or Coach did. And it's crazy how fast he's come back. He's worked so hard, been in there every day after practice, the last one out here. At first, you know, it's, it's always that moment where you're like, oh, uh, it's gonna suck, and you know, you're probably gonna be out for like nine months. So I just attack every day with the mindset of that I'm gonna come out better and stronger than before, and uh, I did that. It's just encouraging for anybody else that's maybe had an injury, you know, they can look at his story and, and really grow from it. I feel like I came out stronger as a man, and as a football player, and as a leader, definitely. I wanted him to get a touchdown. <laughs> Men always bring that energy. Ooh, 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 ooh. I always look forward to this. Not me dancing, but watching everybody else dance. I feel like this year is definitely the latest it's been in the locker room after a win. And we have so many freshmen, but they're all like elite at turning up. <laughs> He's dancing while people are holding him up in the air. <laughs> I'm waiting to get my invitation in the middle of the circle to do my dance afterwards, but I, I haven't gotten that yet. But once I do, I'll, I'll have my moves ready. <laughs> Water's always going everywhere. KJ spraying it. Odd. Oh, oh, what am I doing? Oh no. I don't think Coach Sweeney's ever been picked up before. They picked him up, and it was it was it was amazing. I got a video of this. Yeah, Coach Sweeney. I did. That's his favorite song. Coach Sweeney always tells us you gotta enjoy every single victory. Uh, so we did that. That just describes like our whole program. Coach Sweeney always says the fun's in the winning, and no matter if we win by one point or by However many, we're gonna have fun after every win, so we, we enjoy it all. I feel like we definitely have the best winning atmosphere in college football. All right, we have Syracuse this week in the Carrier Dome, 7.30 kickoff. It's gonna be a hostile environment. We're a different team from last year. They're a different team as well. We're excited, I know they're excited. It's gonna be a test for us. You know, we can't wait. We're gonna be well prepared and ready to go. Week three, first road trip. Uh, big challenge for us, going to a place that's uh, a really tough environment and uh, obviously uh, got beat last time we were up there and uh, you know we're excited about going on the road for the first time and seeing if we can show the maturity and the mental toughness uh, that it takes to, to win on the road.
name's Paul Harrington. I'm the director of football performance nutrition. Basically, my main job is to make sure our guys are fueled properly, making sure it's individualized for them. Nutrition is bookending the schedule. We're kind of the first thing on the schedule before that 6 a.m. lift, and we are doing stuff after practice too. Essentially, everything in between. We have. Hey, this is the fuel bar, and this is where we can make shakes for the guys after they lift. And we can tailor the shakes depending on their weight needs. If they're trying to maintain weight or lose weight, we can change the base of the shake from juice or water, and then use a higher cal protein for the guys trying to maintain their weight or maybe even gain weight, and then a lower cal protein if they're trying to lose weight. We're bringing up snacks and shakes to the guys' meeting room so they can boost up their calories right before they practice. We have snacks, we're bringing smoothies up, individual ones for the guys in their segment meetings. We're making sure that all the meeting rooms also have snack bins that are pertinent to that position. Um, we're constantly making sure that the guys are eating. Hi, I'm Hallie Foreman, the executive performance chef here at Clemson Football. We have a bunch of different types of positions here. So cashiers, one of house staff, utility, dishwashers, cooks, sous chefs, we have everything. It really takes a village to feed the team and the staff. And it's a, pretty much a 18 to 20 hour day, start to finish. We go through about 200 pounds of chicken a day. But normally when we bring in salmon, we go through about 175 to 200 pounds of that as well. Salt, 10 pounds of salt a day. That might seem like an absurd amount of salt, but it's really what's needed to make sure that these guys are not cramping or we're trying to help prevent cramping um, so they stay hydrated. Today we're teaching the guys how to make some stir fry. It's really beneficial for them to know basic skills such as just cutting chicken, peeling a carrot, cutting a green onion. So anything that they can do at home really quick, we try to keep them under 10 to 15 minutes. Anything that they really can learn just so they can do it at home on their own whenever we're not open, which is few and far between, but just so they, they have some skills basically pre-practice. They're also being fueled immediately right before. We have a mobile fueling station we have set up right outside their locker room so they really can't miss it, making sure they're getting a bunch of carbohydrates, fueling them up to get through that two-hour practice, and also a bunch of electrolytes, making sure that they're going to be hydrated for that. We're going to be the closest thing, a mom, grandma, making sure that everyone's going to be well-fed. More importantly, fueling for performance. We're going to make sure that everything is done with a rhyme and a reason. Everything is purposeful with direct intent in a professional manner.